Worms are incredibly diverse organisms, with this general term covering a huge variety of different creatures that all look vaguely, well, worm-like. One of the most impressive and terrifying of the worms alive today though has to be the bobbit worm. These animals are able to grow to lengths of 3 meters and bury themselves in marine sediments where they lie in wait for unsuspecting prey to approach them, before launching out at incredible speeds and capturing their prey with their sharp mouth parts and their throats which are able to be turned inside out. Well, if there's a worm this terrifying alive in our oceans today, then you just know there must have been some kind of prehistoric predatory ambush worm that was just as scary. And that is indeed the case. The fossil record has revealed some incredible fossils of ancient predatory worms that hunted just like the bobbit worm does today. Now, you might be thinking, how exactly does a soft-bodied worm get to be preserved in the fossil record? Soft tissue preservation is an incredibly rare event that usually only occurs in certain exceptional sites that have the right conditions for it. Well, luckily for those of us interested in prehistoric worms, the worm grouping that the bobbit worm belongs to, the polychaete group Unicida, does actually have some hard parts that have a relatively high preservation potential. These can be found as tiny microfossils called scolecodonts, and they're usually between about 0.1 to 2 mm in length. These scolecodonts are actually the jaw parts of the worms, and are sclerotized, meaning they're hardened by the structural protein sclerotin and so end up being more likely to be preserved. The Unicidans, the order that the bobbit worm belongs to, are actually known to have evolved sometime in the Cambrian, with records of them in their latest Cambrian, and then the Scalecodons actually become quite common from the Middle Ordovician period onwards. Well, an extraordinary discovery from the Devonian period of Canada, dating to about 393 million years ago, revealed that despite the jaw parts of these worms being fairly small throughout their fossil record, there was, at one time, a giant Unicidan worm. Compared to the couple of millimetres that most other scolecodonts from around this time reached, this worm was huge, with mouth parts measuring more than a centimetre in length. Looking at the relationships between mouth part size and body length in other unicidans, the researchers who described this animal were able to calculate that this Devonian predator likely grew to lengths of more than one metre, on the same sort of scale as the bobbit worm. This animal was named Websteria prion armstrongi in the paper describing it, published in 2017. The paleontologists who studied it were amazed by how unique its anatomy was, seeming to combine various traits of different prehistoric polychaete worm groups that clearly indicated this was something new. Additionally, it was clear to the scientists that Websteria prion was likely a raptorial predator, using these fearsome looking mouthparts to capture prey. However, they also cautioned that living polychaete worms with vicious looking mouthparts actually have a variety of feeding styles and aren't always carnivorous ambush predators. Indeed, without any body fossils or actual stomach contents for Webster or Prion, it's difficult to say with certainty what this worm was actually eating. But the fact that this creature was so big compared to other related worms that lived around this time is very interesting. Data from the Devonian fossil record of these worms doesn't show that there's any trend towards a greater body size in their evolution, so Webster or Prion is a very notable outlier. This might have indicated that the fossils represented some kind of pathology or exceptional old age. However, the fact that multiple fossils of these mouthparts representing several individuals have been recovered for this worm species shows it's not a fluke. This prehistoric polychaete truly was a giant among its peers. And considering that some polychaetes will continuously grow throughout their lifetime, the researchers suggest that Webster prion actually could have grown to even larger dimensions when they got older. Webster prion is therefore a fascinating example of gigantism among prehistoric worms, and would have been a deadly predator if these incredible mouthparts really were being utilised to dispatch prey items. But there are also other kinds of fossils that can tell us a great deal about the prehistoric predatory worms that once inhabited our planet's oceans. Body fossils are obviously incredibly useful in determining the anatomy of such organisms, even if they are limited to mouth parts. But trace fossils can also reveal a lot about these creatures too. A paper published in 2021 described Miocene-aged fossils dating to around 20 million years old in northeast Taiwan that preserved the burrows of ambush predatory worms, likely created by ancient bobbit worms. The study named this newly recognised kind of trace fossil as the Ichnogenus penicnus, and various aspects of the structure of these traces seems to indicate that the creators were ambush worms. So how do they know this? There are a few things that hint at the wormy nature of these burrows, including the fact that there are variations in the iron content of the sediment of the burrows, the disturbed sediment around the burrows, and the collapsed structures on the outside of this disturbed area. These iron variations form due to the action of bacteria that are attracted to the mucus linings of the burrows, which are excreted by organisms such as polychaete worms in order to provide structural support. 
Other lines of evidence include the relative simplicity of the burrows, as well as the absence of any turnaround chambers, which rules out construction by shrimp, while the circular cross-section of the burrows indicates they were likely not made by bivalves either. Whatever made these traces must have been a long and slender creature, such as a polychaete worm, and interesting features referred to as feather-like collapse structures and the disturbed zone around the burrow lining of the upper shaft also suggest that there was a lot of sediment disruption at shallow depths, consistent with an ambush predator lifestyle. All of this is to say that an ancient bobbit worm relative was almost certainly responsible for the Penicnus traces. The disrupted sediment indicates that these animals were probably lying in wait for prey and then quickly grabbing them and pulling them into their burrows alive, the failed attempts of the prey to escape then resulting in a disturbed zone. Then, once the worm had finished consuming its prey, it would have re-established the burrow, lining it with mucus secretions once again. The size of these traces are also an indication that these polychaetes were pretty big too. The full length of these burrows are up to 2 meters, with a 2 to 3 centimeter diameter, and have an overall L shape to them. So this all shows that bobbit worm-like organisms have been a terrifying presence in the planet's oceans for an immense amount of time. These fascinating worms tell us so much about past ecosystems as well as predator-prey interactions, and again illustrate the importance of studying trace fossils as they can give us insights into actual prehistoric behaviour. I hope you've enjoyed learning about these two amazing fossil discoveries, and I really hope you're enjoying Worm Week 2022 so far. I hope you've enjoyed learning about these two amazing fossil discoveries, and I really hope you've enjoyed Worm Week 2022. If you're not quite ready for this week to be over yet though, then do be sure to head on over to my mum's channel One World, where she's just made a video exploring how worm poop can be used to help save our polluted planet. Also be sure to check the description for a link to the University of Warsaw Faculty of Biology's Worm Week event page, where there are details in both Polish and English for all the activities going on at the uni as they also celebrate this amazing week. Thank you all so much to our Patreon supporters too, including our Dinosaur Tier supporters, Amanda von Nordek, Archianthus, Ari, Clara Middleton, Daniel Ingraham, Dhruv Srivastava, George Fodgetek, Greg Silvernail, Corey Peterson, Loxy Poo, Mendicant Friar, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nicole Bueno, Persian Boy, Ralph Balzac, Robert Thomas, and Steve Bradshaw. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful worms that surround us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.